All right, thank you very much, Michelle. Always like that breakdown. Enjoy yourself up there. Tough duty you drew this week. All right, so Donald Trump, not even the nominee yet, but he's already got a running mate, sort of, an offer, that is, from former Minnesota governor and WWE legend Jesse the Body Ventura. He joins us now in a New Day exclusive. As I always start interviews with you, Gov, I want to thank you for many years of enjoyment early on in my life, and I'm going to treat you with respect despite the Harvard shirt that you are wearing in my face right now. So. Why do you feel so strongly, Governor, that you would want to run with Donald Trump? I didn't, I didn't necessarily say I want to run with him. We have differences of opinions on many issues, but I think Donald Trump is wonderful that he's shaking the system to its core. We have a government in Washington that's broken, clearly, and it needs to be shaken up, and Trump is doing that, and so is Bernie Sanders. I look at both their campaigns and I see great parallels to my campaign in Minnesota where the media attacks you at every direction, but yet the people stand and support you. And look who ultimately won in Minnesota. Jesse Ventura did. Beat the Democrats and Republicans. And so that's why I think it's wonderful what Donald Trump is doing because he's shaking up the system, a system that badly needs it. And let me state this, Chris. First of all, we need to pass a law that doesn't allow campaigning for an office till the year of the election. This is ridiculous. We're starting, wh when will the next one start? 2017, they'll start running for 2020. It's absurd, it's a waste of money, and it shouldn't happen until the year of the election. So if Bernie Sanders were to ask you to run with him, would you consider that as well? Absolutely, either, either one of them. If either one of them truly wanted to grab the independent, and believe me, I am the voice of the independent voter in this United States of America, and look at the last election, the last uh, nationwide election, 64% of the people chose not to vote. That is a majority, Chris, a major majority. All you've got to do is tap into that and you'll win like I did in Minnesota. All right, so let's take you on as a potential candidate. You'd come with a little bit of baggage, not only your own uh, record in Minnesota, but what happened uh, with your current lawsuit? Uh, you did something that was very controversial. You took on uh, someone who was being built as an American hero, Chris Kyle, uh, of American Sniper fame. You say that he defamed you, went to trial, it came out in your favor. Tell us about it. Well, I didn't say he defamed me. He did defame me. He lied about me. He wrote a whole chapter that was a complete fabricated lie. The only way I could prove it, I was backed into a quarter. I did it the way you should, in a court of law, where people have to get up, raise their hand, take an oath, and tell the truth. And it was an overwhelming victory. Imagine, I took on this alleged dead war hero and his grieving widow. How much evidence must there have been for the jury to have overwhelmingly sided with me as well as the federal judge? But it doesn't end there now. Now 32 or 33 major media conglomerates have entered this at the Court of Appeals wanting my verdict overturned. They want the ability to defame people and make money at it and not be held responsible. They want to be able to profit from uh, wrongdoing. And they should not but be allowed to profit from wrongdoing. People may attach some significance to what you're saying about uh, the potential corporate intentions in situations like this, but there was a sensitivity issue. Do you feel that it was worth it uh, to, you know, for lack of a better phrase, go after I, the I estate? I had to. Why? I didn't go I didn't go after the estate. Kyle tragically died. And anyone that knows anything about law then knows that the suit shifts to the estate. Right. That's the natural progress of what happens. That's all I did. I had to clear my name. If I wouldn't have gone into federal court, they would have had that lie in the movie, wouldn't they? They would have put because I boosted the whole thing. This book had a $4,000 pre-sale. When he went on with O'Reilly and all that stuff on television, it jumped 100,000 in one day. So don't tell me I wasn't the catalyst that propelled that book to the stardom it got. And people need to look at the facts of this case. The guy, he may be a, been a great sniper, he may be killed a lot of people in Iraq, but he also was a liar. All right, Jesse Ventura, appreciate your thoughts on the lawsuit and why it mattered to you and also on the election that's coming up. Um, so just to be clear, is there anybody who you would not accept 
as a running mate in the upcoming election? Well, who I I don't necessarily want to run. Let's make that straight. All I did, I was talking to Roger Stone on my Oradot TV show off the grid, and I just threw it out for fun, saying, "Gee, do you think Donald would ever pick me as a running mate? Can you imagine the turmoil that would send through Washington?" And it kind of went ballistic, and here we are today, and I'm talking to you, Chris. But you know, there's no indication well, I'm that I'm push really, back. truly going to get back into politics. I'm going to push back on you, mainly because we're you not. What? I'm going to push back on you, though, mainly because we're not in person. So I'm not afraid of you picking me up and slamming me on the ground. You know, you said that you would consider doing I it. Be, I don't behave that way. <laughs> but I do, so you never know what's going to happen, uh, especially with a guy in a Harvard T-shirt. So right. you said you would consider it. Uh, why do you think the American people should really consider Donald Trump? You didn't run a campaign the way he is right now. You ran this staunchly independent. We need to do better than the system. But you didn't go around beating everybody else up and taking everybody else on personally. Do you support those kinds of tactics by Donald Trump? Well, Donald is going to run his own campaign and do what he decides to do. I can't sit here and tell you what's the pattern of right and wrong. He'll, he'll do what he wants to mm. do. He's a very independent man and always has been. I consider him a friend. Mm. Uh, we've known each other now for going on about 25 years. And uh, I just threw it out there just having fun because could you imagine the Republican Party with the candidacy of Trump and Ventura, <laughs> the ultimate independent, joining forces? I mean, that, that would be very, very interesting. And that's all I threw it out there for was food for thought. Do I really want to be the VP? Ask me next year when the election really should take place instead of this year. Sure. Governor, some say that ticket would be... You know, be this is all being done... Wait, this is all being done for you people so that you get ratings, you promote this ahead of time so that you can all make money. Let's be honest about it. Well, I think the honest truth is that you're trying to make the race as attractive to the voters as you can, and you brought this up. Not me. That's why we're here today. But I'm also uh, encouraged to talk to you about the lawsuit, and I know that's important to you, and clearing your name was as well. So, Governor, thank you for being on sure. with us. Good luck going forward. Thank you, Chris. Always a pleasure. Right. Oh, by the way, and tell uh, Anderson Cooper he still owes me an apology. Okay, I'll tell him. I think he probably just heard you. Mick? All right, some more news for you here this morning. The FAA. I'm the leading state sponsor of terrorism.